Hi friends, welcome back. Today we will discuss an inherited metabolic condition which is relatively common in European populations that is hemochromatosis. In simple terms, this disorder results in iron overload in various tissues and resultant organ dysfunction. You can download the PDF of this lecture from MediLectures app, link is in the description. If you want to revise major units of Harrison in 35 hours of video content, you can also check out our Harrison based revision videos course on the app which is currently priced at rupees 1999 only. Now let's start this topic with a case for better understanding of the topic. A 48 year old male presents with fatigue, arthralgia and darkening of skin. On examination there is hepatomegaly. His brother died of liver cirrhosis at age 52. Lab shows elevated ferritin. Transferrin saturation is more than 70% and there is mildly elevated AST ALT. Which investigation will you order next? So at the end of the presentation, I hope we will be able to approach this case. So hemochromatosis is basically a hereditary or acquired disorder of iron overload leading to iron deposition in multiple organs like liver, pancreas, heart, joints, etc. It leads to tissue damage via generation of free radicals from unbound iron. Now the most important point is that although this disorder is chronically progressive, but it can be reversible if caught early. Before going to the pathophysiology of hemochromatosis, we need to understand the physiology of iron absorption in duodenum. So there is a separate transporter for heme iron which is available in food of animal origin, non-heme iron which usually comes from food of plant origin is converted to Fe plus 2. Normally non-heme iron is present in Fe plus 3 form. It is converted to Fe plus 2 through a duodenal brush border enzyme known as duodenal cytochrome B reductase. Duodenal cytochrome B reductase. So in our GI lumen in duodenum we have iron in plus 2 form. Now this Fe plus 2 is transported inside the enterocyte with the help of divalent metal transporter 1. This iron is then stored in mucosal cell in the form of ferritin. This is known as mucosal ferritin and it is the storage form of iron. Whenever our body requires iron, this ferritin which has iron in plus 2 form can be transported to blood through basolateral membrane of duodenal mucosal cell through a transport protein known as ferroportin 1. This is the transport protein located at the basolateral membrane which will transfer the iron from mucosal cell to the blood. Now here comes the role of another protein which is produced from liver. This is known as hepcidin. This negatively regulates the ferroportin 1 protein and therefore keeps a check on excessive gastrointestinal iron absorption. So this hepcidin will inhibit ferroportin 1 which will inhibit the excessive GI iron absorption. This hepcidin production in liver is positively mediated by signals such as HFE, then transferrin receptor 2, TFR2 and hemoglobin. hemoglobin. So these regulators stimulate the production of hepcidin from liver. Now what causes iron excess in hemochromatosis? If there is mutation in any of these proteins like HFE, hepcidin, transferrin receptor 2, hemoglobin, there will be increased activity of ferroportin. There will be no check on iron absorption from GI tract leading to iron excess in body. So after we have seen the physiology of iron absorption and its regulators, let's see what all conditions can lead to hemochromatosis. So hemochromatosis is classified into primary and secondary. So primary disorders include mutations due to HFE gene. So the type 1 primary hemochromatosis occurs due to HFE gene mutation. It is the most common type of hereditary hemochromatosis responsible for more than 85 to 90 percent of the cases. It is most common, usually presents after 20 years and it is autosomal recessive. Type 2 is juvenile form in which type 2 occurs due to hemoglobin mutation and type 2b occurs due to hepcidin mutation. This is juvenile therefore present before 20 years of age and is usually more severe. 
टाइप थ्री अकर्स ड्यू टू ट्रांसफेरिन रिसेप्टर टू म्यूटेशन इट इज रेयर एडल्ट ऑनसेट टाइप फोर इज माइल्ड ऑटोसोमल डोमिनेट विच अकर्स ड्यू टू फेरोपोर्टिन वन जीन म्यूटेशन सेकेंडरी हिमोक्रोमेटोसिस कैन अकर ड्यू टू रिपीटेड ट्रांसफ्यूजन इन कंडीशन लाइक थैलेसीमिया मेजर क्रोनिक लिवर डिसीज ड्यू टू एल्कोहल नैश हिपटाइटिस सी सो इन सी एल डी वॉट अकर्स इज हेप्सिडिन विच इज नॉर्मली प्रोड्यूस्ड इन लिवर विल नॉट बी प्रोड्यूस्ड इन सेरोसिस देर फोर डेफिशियंसी ऑफ हेप्सिडिन विल लीड टू आयरन एक्सिस देन देर आर सम आयरन लोडिंग अनिमिया विच इंक्लूड सिड्रोब्लास्टिक अनिमिया एंड डायट्री आयरन ओवरलोड इन अनिमिया कैन ऑल्सो लीड टू सेकेंडरी हिमोक्रोमेटोसिस मिसिलेनियस कंडीशन इंक्लूड ए सेल्लो प्लाज्मिया एंड कंजेनाइटल ए ट्रांसफेरिनिमिया नाउ कमिंग ऑन टू द जेनेटिक बेसिस एज वी हैव डिस्कस मोस्ट कॉमन जीन इन्वॉल्व इज एच एफ ई जीन विच इज प्रेजेंट ऑन क्रोमोजोम नंबर सिक्स मोस्ट कॉमन म्यूटेशन इन एच एफ ई जीन इज सी टू एट टू वाई होमोजाइगोसिटी एंड इट इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर मोर देन एट्टी टू नाइनटी परसेंट ऑफ क्लिनिकल हेरिडिटरी हिमोक्रोमेटोसिस another rare mutation is h63d mutation if this mutation is homozygous the condition is clinically insignificant but if this mutation is compound heterozygous with c282y mutation then the patient will have mild to moderate increase in iron stores which can develop the clinical disease if there are associated factors such as heavy alcohol intake or hepatic steatosis as we all know and we have discussed that normal function of hepcidin is to inhibit ferroportin and regulate the iron absorption therefore this mutation will impair the hepcidin regulation leading to increased iron absorption again summarizing the pathogenesis firstly normal body iron stores are 3 to 4 grams daily absorption of iron in men is around 1 mg per day and in menstruating women is around 1.5 mg per day in hereditary hemochromatosis there occurs increased absorption of dietary iron up to more than 4 mg per day this leads to increased plasma iron transferrin saturation and ferritin levels in our body iron accumulates in liver pancreas heart joints and skin there occurs cellular damage by a fenton reaction which leads to oxidative injury and finally fibrosis and end organ damage occurs Now before discussing the clinical manifestations and organ system involvement let's first see the clinical stages of the disease so stage 1 is said when the patient is having genetic predisposition due to mutation then there is development of stage 2 in which there occurs iron overload without any symptoms in stage 3 symptoms arises like arthritis fatigue and other non specific symptoms then finally stage 4 occurs when there is presence of organ damage like liver cirrhosis considering the clinical manifestation initial symptoms of hemochromatosis are often non specific and includes lethargy arthralgia skin pigmentation loss of libido etc when we consider the system wide involvement so general symptoms include fatigue arthralgia liver is usually the first organ to be affected hepatomegaly is present in more than 95% of the symptomatic patients patient can develop cirrhosis and up to 30% of the patients of cirrhosis develop hepatocellular carcinoma and this is the most common cause of death in treated patient of hemochromatosis skin shows typical grayish discoloration hyperpigmentation which is known as bronze diabetes pancreatic infiltration of iron can lead to diabetes mellitus and it is seen in around 65% of the patients with advanced disease involvement of heart that is iron accumulation in heart can lead to dcmp less commonly restrictive cardiomyopathy and arrhythmias when we consider endocrine manifestation iron can infiltrate into the pituitary leading to hypogonadotropic hypogonadism and impotence finally joint involvement can occur and lead to chondrocalcinosis arthropathy and in hemochromatosis especially second and third metacarpophalangeal joints are involved these joint involvement is usually seen in more than 50 years of age and around 25 to 50% of the patients are affected after we have discussed the clinical manifestations let's come on to the investigations and approach to the patient 
So what all investigations can be done? The screening investigations include serum ferritin and transferrin saturation. If serum ferritin is elevated more than 300 nanogram per ml in men and more than 200 nanogram per ml in female, it is suggestive. Then transferrin saturation should be more than 45% and it is the one of earliest marker to be elevated in hemochromatosis. The confirmatory testing is genetic testing that is HFE gene testing C282Y homozygous is diagnostic. If this genetic testing is negative, we can go for MRI which is a non-invasive measure or liver biopsy which is an invasive measure to identify iron in the liver. So in liver biopsy, we go for pulse staining which shows iron deposits. So if the patient of clinical manifestations which we have discussed comes to you with raised ferritin and raised transferrin saturation, we directly go for HFE gene testing. If mutation is confirmed, the diagnosis is confirmed and no further testing is required. If the mutation is not present or present but it is heterozygous and not homozygous, we will have to consider biopsy or we will have to order genetic testing for non-HFE causes. Once diagnosed, we will also assess organ involvement, liver involvement, then presence of diabetes and cardiomyopathy. So this is the flowchart given in Harrison which we have discussed in the simplified form. Coming on to the management, the first line therapy is phlebotomy. So 500 ml of blood is removed weekly until the ferritin levels come to less than 100 nanograms per ml. So basically 500 ml of blood contains around 250 milligrams of iron. In advanced hemochromatosis, we need to remove more than 25 grams of iron. This will require weekly phlebotomy for 1 to 2 years. Once the ferritin levels comes to less than 100 nanogram per ml, we can decrease the frequency of phlebotomy to once every 3 months. It is important to note that only ferritin is used to guide phlebotomy since transferrin saturation levels fluctuate throughout the disease course. Now if phlebotomy is not possible due to some condition like anemia or hypoproteinemia, we have second option that is chelation therapy. So we have parenteral drug deferoxamine which can be used in patients who have contraindications like anemia, hypoproteinemia. This is an expensive drug and it removes iron 10 to 20 milligrams per day. 10 to 20 milligrams per day which is much lesser than phlebotomy. Another oral drug is deferocerox which can be used by patients of thalassemia and secondary iron overload. What dietary advice will you give to the patient? The patient should avoid iron supplements, avoid vitamin C excess as it increases iron absorption from GI tract and alcohol is strictly contraindicated in hemochromatosis because it increases the risk of cirrhosis 10 times in these patients. For monitoring, we advise ferritin every 3 months in initial phase, then every 6 to 12 months. Now, what is the prognosis of this condition? So early diagnosis with regular phlebotomy leads to normal life expectancy. This is a very important point. So we have to screen first degree relatives for HFE mutations. If the patient has developed cirrhosis, he is at increased risk of HCC and therefore we will require surveillance for this patient by ultrasonography and alpha fetoprotein every six months. So summarizing this topic, most common mutation is C282Y in HFE gene. Classic triad is bronze skin, diabetes and hepatomegaly. First biochemical marker is increase in transferrin saturation. Confirmatory testing is through genetic test and best initial therapy is phlebotomy. Coming on to our case, so our patient was having elevated ferritin and transferrin saturation was more than 70%. We will straight away go with genetic testing. So in this case, we found out that there was a homozygous mutation C282 leading to hereditary hemochromatosis. We started this patient on phlebotomy, also screened family members and screened this patient for cirrhosis, diabetes and cardiomyopathy. So with this, we have completed this topic. And finally, there is a MCQ for all of you. You can comment your answer in the comment section. Thank you so much.